Hi and welcome to Vlad's Politique channel. And in this video, I want to explain you a little bit because I'm living in Stockholm in capital in Sweden and also the largest city in the Northern Europe, or let's say the Northern part of the European Union. I want to explain to you about the current debate when it comes to the question if Sweden should join NATO or not. Now, this is a very, I have to say, it's a very important topic because it's very polarizing in the sense of politics. It has a, at least as a, a history of very strong polarization. And um, basically, uh, there is still this very strong perception in Sweden. There is this kind of like a self-image that Sweden is neutral. And in this video, I want to explain a little bit about the debate in general about Sweden and when it comes to NATO and military and the current war in Ukraine and also to tell you a little bit about my opinions regarding um, what should be done and so on. So let's start. So you probably heard at some point in your life that Sweden is a neutral country or a neutral nation. Well, Historically, it's not really completely correct, let's say like this. Yes, Sweden has officially been uh, neutral for a very long time in history. Sweden has not been engaged in a war against another uh, nation since 1814. So the last time, basically, um, let's say Sweden at that time participated in war was during the Napoleonic Wars. After that, Sweden has never been in a war with another nation in the sense of like a conventional war between states. Uh, what you can see here, is, uh, you have two photos. So one of them is you can see a Swedish soldier with uh, some machine gun at a train station looking or more or less like, uh, yeah, taking a look on German soldiers the, from the Nazi Germany during the Second World War. And on the right photo, you can see um, some information and description of um, the uh, Office for Strategic Services OSS operators. So this is like the predecessor. This is be before the CIA, you know, the, the security agency in the United States that were actually operating also in Northern Sweden during the Second World War. Now, why was this the case? Well, it's because it's very hard in, partly it's, it's hard to find in history um, like a state or a polity that has been able to kind of be completely neutral or let's say 100% neutral simply because there is a nasty reality where let's say uh, your official neutrality cannot be implemented at 100%. So during the Second World War, the Swedish government was let's say doing things that were favorable both for the Nazi Germany and favorable for the allies like, you know, Great Britain and, and United States. So you can say that during the Second World War, Sweden was not, let's say, com it was very neutral, but not completely neutral because of different reasons. I, I don't want to go too much into that. I need to make like another video for maybe like 30, 40 minutes. Now, when we speak about NATO, what you have to understand is that uh, Sweden is already if you now speak in the, in the terms of political institutions, but also in terms of military, very integrated in the NATO structure. So this means that the Swedish, let's say the Swedish armed forces, the Swedish military is already you know, familiar with uh, NATO standards uh, when it comes to communication, operations, uh, tactics, uh, and so on. And also Swedish military personnel has been participating in NATO led NATO organized missions, for example, in Kosovo after the Kosovo war uh, at the end of 1990s. And there is also something called partnership for, for peace and Sweden has been one of the very active uh, states there, uh, partly because Sweden has a history of, let's say, contributing to international peacekeeping, mainly in the United Nations framework, but uh, also in the NATO framework. So this is also a very interesting aspect. And what's happening now at the moment, if you now speak about the war in Ukraine and the political debate about um, not only Sweden, but also Finland, 
joining NATO or not. This is a very interesting case because um, both Sweden and Finland are often you know, viewed as neutral uh, states and there have been even been arguments that you know Ukraine should be neutralized and become like Finland or so to say that you know Finland should be is a, seen as a model for Ukraine. This is promoted by certain um, opinion makers like um, and so on. But anyway, what's happening now at the moment is that the public discourse or let's say the uh, public opinions or opinions among citizens in Sweden, Finland is changing dramatically. You know, it's changing in a, in a very fast way, of course, because of the war in Ukraine. But if you see a little bit like historically for the, let's say, last five to ten years, you can see that both in Finland and in Sweden, uh, there has been a development of more people being, let's say, pro-NATO in favor of Sweden and Finland joining NATO. And one interesting thing with Sweden is that even, let's say, during the Cold War, when Sweden was regarded very often as a very socialist, left-wing, progressive state and society, even at that time, according to certain estimates, for example, by Swedish Foreign Policy Institute, uh, uh, even like during the Cold War, somewhere like between, let's say, 15 to 20, maybe even 25 percent of Swedes were actually in favor of joining NATO already at that time. And usually the people who were in favor of that were more like either right wing, like right uh, conservative or liberal in their uh, political views. So now there is a very, uh, let's say it's a, it's a very, this is a very large change. And one interesting, another interesting thing here is that the, the, the narrative of the Russian government of Putin's regime was to prevent you know, in, that Ukraine is being invaded in order to prevent NATO, to prevent NATO enlargement. So not only uh, Ukraine becoming a NATO member, but also others. But now the opposite thing is happening where NATO could actually have two more member states before the end of this year, at least that, you know, ap applications are going to be submitted. And as I mentioned earlier, Sweden is already integrated very much in the NATO military and political structure and framework. So this means that, you know, becoming a NATO member state is not going to, uh, regardless what you think about it, it's not going to be um, a hard task to do. It's not going to be, let's say, a hard process for, for Sweden. And once more, I really want to highlight that Sweden, despite all everything that you, you can read in the media, even like in larger media, let's what's a, let's say mainstream media, uh, Sweden is not neutral. Sweden is partial. Why? Because in 1995, and I have another video about this, um, you can check in my video section. Sweden became a member of the European Union, and being an EU member state means that you need to support other. European member states in the case of war as well. So true, the European Union doesn't have its own armed forces, at least not at the moment. But let's say, for example, if Russia now, fictionally, theoretically speaking, would attack uh, Lithuania or, or Latvia or Estonia, and the Baltic states, or even attack Finland, which is not a NATO member state, uh, Sweden would still be obliged to support for example, Latvia or or Finland, even by using military resources, if the Swedish government makes that kind of decision. So basically, the European constitutionalism, which is very intergovernmental states, that all member states have to contribute to each other in the case of war, but the governments are, how to say, they have the, the choice to make if they want to use the military or not. But from my experience, from my views, I would say that in in such a scenario, Sweden would actually use some part of its military resources capabilities to, let's say, support Latvia or Finland in the case of war with Russia. So when it comes to the debate in general, so here, here are some of my opinions. So first of all, I am actually, I'm not in favor of Sweden uh, joining the NATO because I don't think for different reasons, I don't think NATO is an optimal solution. I'm more on the, let's say, federalist camp, and we are promoting the idea of European armed forces that you know will um, have to say be in the service of all European citizens, and also be in the control, let's say, of the European 
Parliament together with the, together with the European Commission, and I think that would be a, a better solution, and, and a more democratic solution because NATO is let's say more intergovernmental, and then you also have the problems with uh, Turkey and also problems you know because what has been happening in the United States because of uh, Trump and isolationism. So I think that you know Europe in general needs um, a new structure and that and a more demo democratic structure as well. But I also support at the same time the idea that there should be a democratic referendum in Sweden and also in Finland as well. Because I think, and this is especially for Sweden because the elections are now taking place in September, I mean general elections like parliament elections, I think that this would also be a way to exercise democracy and also that um, the general population in Sweden gets more engaged in the public debate and and uh, people on different sides, they really provide their you know, best pros and cons, like arguments in favor, arguments against, against Sweden uh, joining, the, uh, joining NATO. So these are the thoughts I wanted to share with you for, uh, for this video. And um, uh, if you like the video, if you like my content, please follow my uh, channel. And you can also find more info in the video description. So thank you very much for watching and keep fighting for peace, love and democracy. Ciao.